Hi guys, welcome to Two Wheel Reviews. Uh, today I'm going to be changing the front tyre on my BMW K1100 LT. Um, I'm just going to show you the process of removing the wheel and changing the tyre. So here goes, a quick little tip. A standard Commoner Garden front paddock stand. While the bike's on the main stand, we'll lift the front nicely, enough to lower and remove the front road wheel um, while it still remains on the stand. Guys, taking the wheel off. Um, the K1100 has a two-part mudguard: the front portion, the rear portion. You need to remove the rear one so that you can access the caliper bolts. Just the standard configuration: two bolts holding the calipers. Lift them up, suspend them out of the way. Don't leave them dangling on the pipes. Uh, the wheel itself: you've got two pinch bolts either side. Anyone who's familiar with with uh, pretty much any modern sports bike will recognise the system. An Allen bolt this side, a slot for a screwdriver this side. Undo the Allen bolt on that side, undo the pinch bolts, support the front of the bike or have somebody lean on the back of the bike, but have something ready to chuck underneath one of the fork legs or both, preferably both of them once the wheel's out. Um, slacken the pinch bolts, gently tap this out until you can draw this large central axle out. What some people do when they change bike uh, tyre is unbolt the, uh, the discs from either side. Um, strictly speaking, every time you unbolt these, you're supposed to new, use new bolts to refasten them because they stretch and they, become, they can become stressed. And in theory, because they're under great amounts of stress when the brakes are grabbing onto them to slow it down, it can uh, shear them. Uh, I personally don't like to take that risk, so unless I'm actually changing them or doing something with them, I don't bother. I leave them bolted on, use a couple of planks of wood to make sure that the wheel rim sits on the planks of wood and the discs sit proud so that you're not actually sitting the disc on the floor and damaging them. Uh, for a bead breaker, I use um, a piece of wood cut off at a 45 degree angle at the end, which sits on the edge there, and uh, another length of wood just there, which sits under there and acts as a lever. So, get your tail lever under, get a good bite. And yank it up and over. Your second tail lever, a little way along. Same thing, up and over. This is where the little one comes in. Pop that in there, take that one out, and that holds that in place. chunk of tyre. And do the same thing again. And then it's a case of working your way steadily around the wheel. Uh, you can buy rim protectors which are a strip of plastic which clip on. Personally I find them too thick. The best uh, method of protecting is something like an old plastic oil tub um, and cut the sides out of that and then cut strips about the, the width of a credit card length and as long as you're comfortable with, insert them and put your lever behind them and then lever back out and that will protect your rim from scratches. Once you've got one side out, this bit's relatively easy. It's just a case of uh, encouraging this off of the rim on this side. And the easiest way I find is to actually hold the tyre like so. Be very careful when the tyre does pop off because what uh, you don't want to do here, what you don't want to do here of course is uh, drop the wheel straight onto your discs. Once you're so far off, a bit of heaving and away you go. One tyre one rim. This, as you can see, hopefully there, is absolutely knackered. OK, 
Okay, next thing to do, quick check around inside the room for any mess. Uh, if it's looking a bit messy or a bit rough in places, a bit of sediment or anything like that, get some sandpaper and just give it a quick whiz round, clean it up. One of the things that a lot of people don't bother with is changing the valve once they're changing a tyre. And it's a quick and easy thing to do, they're not expensive. And if one of these goes, you've got instant loss of pressure. So for the sake of a couple of quid, replace the valve every time you replace the tyre. Okay, it locks into place with a quite firm positive thump feel. Can't really hear, but you can feel it as it goes in. Just check the back and make sure it's seated properly all the way around the edge, which it is. That's great. Okay, here's the new one. This is uh, an Avon Road Rider. Um, fairly new um, tyre. Um, the, these are great, they come in a massive, massive range of fitments. They're a good price and they're a very good tyre. I've got them fitted to two of my other bikes and I really quite like them. I'm, I'm a big fan of Avon tyres full stop anyway. This stuff is, um, is the proper stuff. Um, tyre soap as used by tyre fitters. It's incredibly cheap. You can get it for about four or five pounds for a huge tub like this which will last you years and years um, for the amount of tyres you're likely to fit. You can also get smaller tubs for a couple of quid so uh, you do have a, a bit of an option in there. Okay, now the tyre soap should make it a little bit slippy, so you get one of the edges on, like so. And start squeezing around. Okay, first edge on, and amazingly, this is a rare thing indeed, but the, uh, the secondary edge has almost worked its way in. Usually this is a bit of a struggle, so uh, needless to say I'm quite chuffed with that. And uh, hopefully a couple of little nips, and this should be right where I need it to be. How's that? Fantastic. Okay, another dollop of tyre soup all the way around this second edge. Nope. Okay, now for the inflation. Um, using a compressor for this part. Now, I'll mention you can use a hand pump. Um, I've seen it done, I've never done it myself, I wouldn't want to. Um, but you can use a hand pump with much, much frantic pumping like crazy. Uh, personally, I wouldn't want to try that. Uh, get yourself a compressor, it's far, far easier. If you plan to do tyre changes, you'll thank yourself in the long run. And you've got this bit here is still my favourite part of the tyre change, just hearing it pop onto the rim. Now tyre valve back in, pump it back up. Check all the way around the edge, you'll have a mark around the inner rim of the tyre. Make sure that that mark corresponds and leaves an even gap between the rim of the tyre and the mark, or is right up against the rim, whichever way it's actually laid out. But when we're clamping the bolt up on the other side, and once it's all nice and tight and tucked to specifications, tighten up your pinch bolts, rebolt your calipers, nice and tight, bolted, tucked to specifications, fit your mud guard at the back, and uh, you can then lower it off the stand. At this point, um, have a check of your tyre pressure, take it for a ride, get it warmed up, start scrubbing your tyre in, and then uh, keep a check on your tyre pressure just over the next few days. 